Today we're going to talk about chapter 6, section 2, which is numerical expressions. This chapter starts on textbook page 441 and goes through textbook page 444. All right, on this slide you'll see that I've circled the page number in red. You should be on textbook page 441. It looks like this with the hockey girl on the side. And on the next slide we're going to see a zoomed in section so that you can see exactly what we're doing. On this page, um, I'm going to be using two different colors here. I would prefer that you not really use pen unless it's ballpoint pen. And the only time you can use pen or colored pencil, colored pencil would be my preference because those are going to be um, better for the pages. They won't seep through. But I do like the idea of color coding, and I do it when I teach so that you can differentiate between the different things. So on this page here, I'm going to use purple and red to show you the difference here. So it says, the table shows the cost of different snacks at a concession stand at the school hockey game. So it says popcorn is $2, juice or soda is $1, and hot dogs are $4. So now it shows you a picture of three things of popcorn. So it says popcorn is $2, and we know that based on that right there. So we're going to circle that in purple, and then we're going to go, okay, $2, $2, and $2. So 2 plus 2 is 4, plus another 2 gives us $6. Now I'm going to switch pen colors to red because now I've got, I can see a picture of four hot dogs here. Now, the four hot dogs are great, but each hot dog is $4. So now I'm gonna write a four here in red, a four, a four, and another four. Four plus four is eight, plus four is 12, plus another four is 16. Now it says to find the total cost of buying three boxes of popcorn, which is what they showed us up here. That's our three boxes, and four hot dogs. Okay, so now we have our four hot dogs here. And to find the total, we would obviously need to add those together. So we would have to take, and I'm back to purple now, because we are going to have three boxes at $2 per box. Then we're going to add that to the four hot dogs that are, whoops, the four hot dogs that are $4.00. Per box. I don't want that to look. There we go. Four dollars per box. So now what we're going to do is three times two we said was six. We're going to add six plus four times four we said was 16. And then we're going to get our actual total. So 16 plus six is going to give us a total of $22. So our final answer here is $22. You should put a box around that. And then it says, what expression could you use in exercises one and two? So in exercises one and two, you wanted to use, let me change colors here now. In exercises one and two, you would have used um, multiplication. Multiplication for exercise one and two. And I'm just abbreviating shorthand because this is just an intro to the chapter. So you don't have to have super detailed notes here. All right, and then the next one, it looks like, let's use this blue. And it says, explain how to find the answer for exercise three using operations. So using operations, basically what they're trying to tell you is that you need to multiply first. That is not a good color. So let's go back to red. That you need to multiply first, then add. And that's what we did. And again, this doesn't have to be super specific because we're gonna be going on to the next section. Um, we're gonna be going into the chapter now. This was just sort of like a warm up to get you introduced to what the section was gonna be about. All right, if you'll go ahead and turn and look on page 442, so that's right down here. I just put a red circle around it there. So you should be looking at a page that looks just like this. On the next slide again, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in. All right. So in this slide, it's going to be very important that you pay close attention because this slide is really talking to you about PEMDAS. So they're talking to you about, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Whoops. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Now, this is all fine and dandy, but this is the place where many people are going to make errors. My dear and Aunt Sally. So let's go through these operations one by one. So in the first one, it says the very first thing you should do, and this is an order, so one, two, three, four. The very first thing that you should do is simplify the expressions inside grouping symbols like parentheses. So parentheses are the things that look like this. So if you have two, point, two plus three, that's something that you need to do before you add the four to it, okay? So the parentheses are right there. The next one says that you need to find the value of all of the powers. So if you're gonna do, whoops, 
4 squared plus 2, then that means you need to do this first because 4 squared has a power or an exponent. So everybody's usually pretty good with those. But then we get to the multiplication and divide, or multiply and divide. So I'm going to use a different color here. And it says to multiply and divide in order from left to right. This is the trickier part. So what that means is that if you have a problem where you are, if you have a problem where you are looking at both division and multiplication, like the example I have here, 12 divided by 2 times 6. What they're saying is, is that once you determine, for instance, that there's only multiplication and division here, then you need to make sure that you're doing the multiplication and division, but multiplication doesn't have to get done first. Just because it says multiply right here before it says divide, it doesn't matter. Multiplying and dividing has to happen before all the adding and subtracting. See, step three has to happen before step four, but multiplying doesn't have to happen before dividing. You just have to make sure that you get all the multiplying and dividing done. So what that means is in this problem, even though the multiplying comes first in our sentence right here, see right there, that doesn't mean that we do this first. That's a no-no. So I'm going to go ahead and we're not going to do that part first. So now I'm going to erase that. The first thing that we would do is we would divide 12 divided by 2 first. And it does make a difference. I'll show you in an example in just a moment. It definitely makes a difference. We'll go ahead and draw an arrow down here to the bottom. So I'll work it out both ways so that you can see. So we have 12 divided by 2 times 6. So I'm going to do it the correct way first. So the correct way would be left to right. We have 12 divided by 2 is 6 times that 6 that was from up here, right there. Now 6 times 6 is 36. So this is the correct way to solve that problem. Okay, yay. Now I'm going to erase this little arrow here so that and I'll redraw it so that it comes back like this. Okay, so now what we're looking at, um, I'll do it the incorrect way. So 12 divided by 2 times 6. So now somebody that's just reading the multiply, uh, multiply and divide, and they go, oh, I have to multiply first. 2 times 6 is 12. Now we have the 12 that was here in, to begin with, divided by 12, and that gives us 1. So you can see that our answer is entirely different. So you need to make sure that you do not do it this way. So this is what not to do, and this is what to do right here. So that is the happy face. Kind of looks mad. And then the next thing that you have going on here is addition and subtraction. And again, we have the same problems with addition and subtraction that we have with multiplication and division. Um, addition does not necessarily come before subtraction. So addition and subtraction are equal to each other. You also have to read that from left to right. So once you determine that you are going to be adding and subtracting, you just do it from left to right. Okay, and so for instance, in the problem we have here, 10 minus 6 plus 2, you'll see the correct way to do this is just to read it from left to right. So even though the word add, see how add comes first? Whoops. See how add comes first right here? That does not mean that we're going to add the 6 plus 2. That doesn't happen. That means that we need to make sure we do the adding and subtracting last because it falls last, but we do it in order from left to right. So we would actually be doing the 10, whoops, we would actually be doing the 10 minus 6 first, which would give us 4, and then we'll do 4 plus 2, which gives us a total of 6. So that is the correct way to do that one there. And before we move on to the next page, I'm going to erase a little bit of this so that it's not in our way of the vocabulary. Um, you should not erase it. You just want to make sure that you understand. I'm going to erase that answer there, too. I'll put 6 right over there. All right. It says a numerical expression like 3 times 2 plus 4 times 4 is a combination of numbers and operations. So I want you to notice that in this example of numerical operations, there's, there are only numbers and there are only operations. Um, the order of operations tells you which operation to perform first so that everyone finds the same value for an expression. So right here, this is the reason for the order of operations. This is why it's important. We need everyone to be able to perform math the same way and come up with the same answers. All right, so this isn't actually in your book anywhere. So you're going to, um, this is just my rendition of what it should look like. Um, Basically, this has all the stuff from the textbook in it that you have. I would really like for you to have this representation of PEMDAS. 
See, because I want you to notice that multiplication and division are on the same line right there, and addition and subtraction are on the same line, instead of it going in an order. Because when you do it like this, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, it really looks like multiplication has to come before division, and that's not true. Remember, so that's why multiplication and division and addition and subtraction are on the same line like that. So you just want to copy the part that I've circled in yellow because everything else is already written there for you, which is fine. That's why I typed it here. All right, so now we're looking um, at the first example. So in example one, it says 10 minus 2 plus 8. So the first thing I ask myself is, are there any grouping symbols or powers? So are there any parentheses? No. Are there any exponents? No. Is there any multiplication or division? No. So that's what we've done here, here, and here. So no. So then we say, is there any adding and subtracting? Yes, add and subtract in order from left to right. Remember that. So the first thing that I do, first I'm going to write the problem out to the side. I would like you to do the same thing. 10 minus 2 plus 8. So I do want you to rewrite the problem as I've done here because I want you to see what I'm doing. So because we're going to go from left to right, I put a box, and I would like you to do the same thing around the first thing that I'm processing. I call it processing. That means solving that portion. 10 minus 2 leaves me with 8. And now I go 8 plus, and remember, I'm left with that 8 up here from the top. So now I have 8 plus 8 is my new problem, and my answer is 16. And I'm going to put a box around that. Now, the problems are going to get longer and more difficult, so that's why I have you put a box around the operation when you have anything more than one operation to do. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next example. Example 2 says 4 plus 3 times 5. So we're going to go ahead and write that. 4 plus 3 times 5. And I would like you to write it as well. There are no grouping symbols or powers, so the please excuse is taken care of. And you want to make sure that you multiply before adding. So let's go ahead and put a box around what we need to do first. Multiplication and division comes first. So what that means is we need to multiply that 3 times 5. So the first thing I'm going to do, because... Um, we had, because this is at the back of the problem, I'm gonna first start by bringing down my four plus. That doesn't change. Nothing about four plus changes yet. Then I'm gonna look at three, plus, three times five, and I'm gonna go, okay, three times five is 15. So we're gonna put three times five is 15. So right there is 15. Now I have to add 15 plus four, which gives me a total of 19. And I'm gonna put a box around my answer. So even though the example is printed for you right there in the textbook, I would like for you to write what I've written here in the margins in your textbook. All right, let's go ahead and do the on your own now. So it says do these problems to find out if you've got it. So you wanna push pause on your video and let's see how you did. And before you actually do that, you wanna make sure that you copy the problem first because I want you to have enough room to work through the problem. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you had um, no problems working these out. So the first thing that I wanted you to do was to copy the problem again. So let me clean this up a little bit right here, which I've done here, times, whoa, times 15. All right, I wanted you to clean the problem up, or I wanted you to copy the problem first so that we can identify what we need to do. There are no parentheses, there are no exponents. So now we do multiplication and division. Oh, look, we do have multiplication. So we're gonna put a box around that two times 15. Once we've identified what we're processing first, we're going to see, oh, we still have this 10 plus right here that we need to take care of. So we're going to write 10 plus, just bringing that down. Anything that you're not processing, you bring down. And then we're going to multiply 2 times 15. So 2 times 15 is 30. And then the last step is going to be to add the 30 plus the 10, or the 10 plus 30, which gives you 40. And you want to put a box around your final answer. Hopefully you did well there. Let's go ahead and look at B now. B says 16 divided by 2 times 4. So we're going to look at this. And I think they tried to trick you here a little bit, like I was showing you in my example a couple slides ago, because you go, okay, there are no parentheses, there are no exponents, multiplication and division. Oh, yeah, we have multiplication and division. Remember, multiplication doesn't come before division. You read it from left to right. It just has to come before subtraction and addition. So now let's go ahead and put a box around what we're processing first. Since we only have multiplication and division, we're going to be dividing 16 divided by 2 first. So 16 divided by 2 is 8, and then we're just going to bring down that times 4. Notice I didn't change anything or do anything with that times 4 at all. Then in the next step, 
Working down, it's very important that you continue to work down, just like I'm working here. So if your problem looks any different than mine, when we finish it, you need to go ahead and correct it now because these are your examples that you're going to work from. The last piece here is to multiply 8 times 4, and that gives you 32. And you want to put a box around your final answer. All right, now we're going to go ahead and look at textbook page 443. So notice I've circled in red, and the textbook should look like what you see on the slide here. All right, on textbook page 443 at the top, it says parentheses and exponents. Expressions inside grouping symbols, such as parentheses, right there, are simplified first. They call it simplifying, I call it processing. So simplifying is fine as well. Follow the order of operations in parentheses. Okay, that's a very important note. So what that's saying is, is that if you have parentheses and then you have other stuff, you need to follow the order of operation within the parentheses first, and then you go outside. It'll make a little more sense when we go through some examples. Um, for example, in the expression three, so we're gonna write this on the outside here, three, plus, parenthesis, 4 squared, plus 5, parenthesis. So obviously, the first thing that we're going to process is the parenthesis because it's, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, parentheses come first. So you want to put your red box around the parentheses first. Now, within the parentheses, you also still need to follow the order of operations. So what am I going to do first? Am I going to add 5 plus 4, or am I going to square 4 first? Well, we're going to square 4 first. So let's first bring down the 3 plus 2 so we don't forget about that. Now, inside the parentheses, you'll notice that I'm going to keep that parentheses until everything inside the parentheses is gone. So 4 squared, remember, is 4 times 4, so that's going to be 16 plus 5 and parentheses. Again, the reason I kept the parentheses is because all I did was deal with this 4 squared right here. So now I'm going to put a box around my next step. My next step is still to deal with the 16 plus 5. Now I'm going to continue to drag that 3 plus down. It's very important that you do that each time. And then 16 plus 5 gives me 21. So 16 plus 5 is 21. And then my final step, which I'm going to do in a different color here, is going to be 21 plus 3 is going to be 24. And you put a box around your final answer. So the answer here should be 24 to this problem because as they said here, you need to find the value of four squared before you can add the expression inside the parentheses. All right, let's look at example three. So even though they've written three for you, I would like you, just like we've done on the others, to go ahead and rewrite number three here. And let's see, you wanna write 20, and you can write it out to the side on the right for the margin or the left, you don't have to write it above. I'm writing it above because that's where there's space. 20 divided by four, plus 17 times 9 minus 6. So that's a pretty big problem. Well, since it's a big problem, 9 minus 6, it's really, really important that we all follow the same order of operations to solve it. So let's go ahead and break it down step by step. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use red to put a box around the first thing I need to work on, simplify, process. So I'm going to look through here. Please, parentheses, that's my first thing. Okay, I do see some parentheses. So I'm gonna put a box around that. So what I need to do though, before I even think about that parentheses is I'm just gonna recopy everything before I get to the parentheses. 20 divided by four plus 17 times, and now I need to do whatever it is in the parentheses. Nine minus six, well nine minus six is three. So it's gonna be times three, excellent. Now let's see what our next step is gonna be. <clears throat> Please excuse, do we have any exponents? We don't. My dear, do we have any multiplication and division? We do. So now when we have multiplication and division, we need to move from left to right, just like we read. So let's go ahead and put a box around the 20 divided by four. And right now, that's all I would process. 20 divided by four is five, and I'm gonna copy five plus 17 times three. And now we also have, changing colors again, we also have 17 times three. So now off to the side somewhere, I'm gonna go, okay, 17 times three, 21, three, four, five. Okay, so that gave me 51. So now I'm gonna do 51 here. And, but you can't forget this five plus, so it should be five plus 51, okay? And now five plus 51, the final piece is going to be to get, dun, da, 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 
56 and a box around or circle around your final answer. So you can tell that their final answer matches our final answer. So the way that I've shown you here with the boxes is the way that I would like you to show your work because it's very easy to identify where you made the error. All right, so now we're gonna look at example four. So just like all the others, the first thing I would like you to do is recopy the problem. Three times six squared plus four. So are there any parentheses? No, there are no parentheses. Are there any exponents? Yes, there is. So I'm gonna put a red box around six squared. I'm gonna copy three times and then plus four on the end. Now I know that in red, I'm gonna put whatever six squared is. Well, remember, six squared is not six times two, it's six times six. So we get 36 here. So your second line of work that's just below your first line should look like three times 36 plus four. If yours doesn't, you wanna make sure you have it like that now. Our next step is to identify, do we have any more exponents? Nope. Multiplication and division, why yes we do. So I'm gonna put a box around three times 36. <clears throat> and off to the side, I'm gonna do 36 times three. Whoa, Let's see if I can make that happen a little better. 36 times three. This is just me showing my work for the math. Three times three is nine plus um, one is 10, 108. So now in that purple box, and notice I write whatever it is that I processed or simplified in the same color I put the box around. Because what I'm saying is this three times 36 is 108, which is why I wrote 108 in purple. So now I have 108 plus four. And then my final answer, which I'm going to choose to do in green, is gonna be the 108 plus four, which is 112. And I'm gonna put a box around that final answer. So these are the things that I'm looking for when I'm checking your work. I wanna see line by line directly beneath the other line, and I would like to see where you process each step. So if I'm looking at this example and this is on your work, I'm looking for all four lines, and I'll look for six squared, I'll look for three times 36, and then I'll look for 112. So you wanna make sure you have everything that you see here. All right, now we're looking at example five. Example five, they give you the little setup here. That's fine, but I'm not a huge fan of the setup, honestly. So let's go ahead and write our problem just like we've been doing. Five plus, in parentheses, they have eight squared, minus two times two. So the first thing we're gonna do is rewrite the problem, which I had you guys do right here. So now we need to identify what do we need to do first? Well, do we have any parentheses? Yes, we do, right here. So that's the first thing I'm gonna process. So everything else, I'm gonna write five plus, that stays the same, times two, that stays the same. And remember from the example, because there's something already inside the parentheses that I can't finish up in one step, I'm gonna keep that parentheses there. The reason I'm doing that is because the only thing I'm really processing first is the eight squared. Eight squared, remember, is not eight times two, it's eight times eight. So that gives you 64. And even within this parentheses, you have minus two. And actually, let me just make that a little smaller. There you go. And the reason I left it like that is because all you could really do inside there was the 64 first. So notice you don't do eight minus two and then square it. You have to do the eight squared first. So now in my next step, I'm gonna go ahead and put a box around the parentheses still. I'm gonna rewrite the five plus and the times two at the end. And I'm gonna go, okay, 64 minus two gives me, in purple, 62. So now, and I'm probably, I'm gonna use my eraser so that I can get that times two and plus five a little closer. Times two. And let's get that plus five, five plus. All right, so now I'm gonna find what's my next step. My next step, I'm going to um, put a box around in green. So please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So we've got that addition sign there. You know that guy's always gonna be last. So off to the side though, I need to figure out what 62 times two is. Two times two is four, six times two is 12. So we have 124. So I'm gonna put that 124 right here. And in black, I'm gonna add five plus. So now my very, very, very final step is going to be to add 124 plus five. That gives me 129, which should be your answer here. So now is the time for the do you have it or got it section. So you wanna go ahead and pause the video and try these now. Refer back to the examples frequently if you're having trouble. Welcome back. What we're looking at now is um, problem C. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is say, okay, do I have any parentheses? Why, yes I do. And since I know that my parentheses can be handled in one step, I'm gonna go, okay, five minus two is three. Oops. So I'm gonna write that three right here. 
Then I'm going to fill in everything that was around it. So we've got 25 times 3 divided by 5 minus 12. So now I'm going to look and see, okay, what's next? What do I need to work on next? Please, so all the parentheses are gone, excuse, my dear. Oh, now I need to do the multiplication and division. So the first thing I do, and remember, multiplication and division is from left to right. The first thing I'm going to work on is 25 times 3. Well, I know that that is 75 because they're like quarters. So now 75 divided by 5 minus 12. All right, now I need to figure out what do I need to do next? Well, I haven't taken care of all the multiplication and division. I still have division. So we're going to put a box around 75 divided by 5. Then I'm going to do that off to the side here just because I don't know what that is off the top of my head. So let's do 75 divided by 5. 5 times 1 is 5. 2 left over. 5. 15. Perfect. So now I know that 75 divided by 5 is 15. And then I fill in what was left, minus 12. And my very, very last step is going to be to subtract 15 minus 12, and I get 3. So I need to put a box around that as well. All right, welcome back. I'm going to go ahead and try and speed this up a little bit because I want to keep the video um, not super long. So some of the steps I'm going to try and go through a little quicker. So the first thing I need to identify is that I have parentheses. So I know that that's going to be my first thing. But you need to also look inside the parentheses because it can't be processed in one step. So you need to look and see, okay, first I'm going to do exponents. Because remember, it's like a city within a city. So now we're going to go ahead and say, all right, 2, square, or two cubed, remember, is actually 2 times 2 times 2. So don't hurry through this and go, okay, that must be 6. Because 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is actually 8. So 8 is what goes there. And we're going to copy everything else around it. So 24 divided by, remember we have to keep those parentheses because we haven't processed everything yet. 2 cubed was 8 plus 4 and parentheses. Now we're going to switch colors because we still have a parentheses. So that is still our next priority. So now we've got 8 plus 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that gives you 12. Excellent. And we can't forget to bring everything down that had not, has not yet been processed. So remember that 24 right there. And I'm going to just erase that so it doesn't look funky. All right. So then our next step is going to be um, to look and go, okay, 24 divided by 12. Well, that's easy enough. That is 2. So our final answer here is 2. All right. Now we're looking at textbook page 444. So I'm going to go over example 6 at the top. All right. Example 6 says, write an expression. So this is the hardest part of this section. Write an expression for the total cost of five lotions, two candles, four lip balms. Find the total cost. So this looks like a bunch of mumbo jumbo up here. Woo, crazy. So let's break it down. Remember that hot dog example that we had in the beginning? So let's break it down with colors. So the first thing they said is we have, so let me erase what I've done up here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is red. They said we have five lotions, right? So if we have five lotions, and lotion actually even costs $5, so that means we have five of them, and their cost is $5 each, right? We're going to add it to, and now it says two candles. So I'm going to switch to purple and show you we've got two candles. So that's how many candles we have. And now I'm going to circle in um, purple the number seven because it's saying there are there's seven dollars per candle. So now we have the plus two times seven dollars. We're going to add one more thing to it because it says now we've got four lip balms. So right there, see in the problem, four lip balms. Let me erase that a little bit. There we go. And we need to see that so four lip balms and each lip balm, as I've circled up here, is two dollars. Perfect. So now what you can see is you can see kind of like the longer version. Now you need to be able to identify before you actually write your official expression because Notice right there, it says write an expression. Your official expression, whenever you see a number times another number, or I'm sorry, a number times itself, as in this five times five right here, you need to identify that and go, oh, that's five squared because it's five times five. So it's gonna be five times five plus two times seven. And what happens here for the official expression, because this is gonna be one part of your answer, is that you have two, times seven, you lose the dollar sign. So you needed it for the first step so that you understood where the numbers were coming from, but for the actual expression, you do not need it. Plus, and then the last one is gonna be four times two. 
So on your test, quiz, whatever it is, this is one whole answer right here. So that would be one whole line. And then it says to find the total cost. So the second line is gonna be you actually processing it. So let's go ahead and try that now. All right, so now what I've done is I've just gone to a new slide so that we can go ahead and take a look at this. So now we're gonna do, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Now, even though we have parentheses here for these numbers, um, we can actually do those first, that's fine. So we've got please, so that would be first. Um, hang on one second. So now we have five squared plus 14 plus eight. And on this next line, you see where we squared the five. Five times five is 25. And our final answer here is $47. Now you wanna pause the video and try the got it on your own. Okay. Welcome back. The first thing that you wanna notice about this problem is that it's Alex and three friends are at the mall. So what does that actually mean? That actually means that there are four people. So it says each person buys a pretzel for $4. So see that $4 is a pretzel. And sauce for a dollar. So we have sauce for $1. And a drink for $2. So now we have a drink for $2. So now we have to start making this look like an equation. Well, remember before when we had the popcorn and the hot dogs, we had to write how many there were. Well, how many people are there? Remember at the beginning, I said, don't be tricked. That's four because it's Alexis, sorry, and three friends. So that means it's four people. So four people bought a pretzel for $4. So it was for $4. Then we're going to add, because remember we're doing a total. The sauce was a dollar. So again, four people for a dollar each plus, and the drink was $2. But again, four people. $2. And that is my crazy dollar sign right there. So it's important that you have this first step here. And now you see that we've got four squared. And if you love that as four times four, it's okay. It won't be counted wrong. But four squared, and the reason I said four squared is because four times four, four squared plus four plus eight, because four times one is four and four times two is eight. So then we've got 16 plus four plus eight, which gives us $28. All right, now we're on textbook page 144. I'm gonna ask that you only do numbers one through four, so it's only four problems, but I am gonna ask that you either attach a separate sheet of paper where you can show me each step, or if you can fit it on this one, that would be fine. I can definitely fit mine on this page, but if you don't feel comfortable doing that, feel free to attach a sheet of paper. By attach, I mean you need to staple it on. So please take your time. You need to show each and every step. Refer back to the examples. Good luck, and I'll see you next class period.